and welcome to another edition of Military in Hawaii. I'm the host, Calvin Griffin. And for those of you who hadn't seen the program before, here on the program, we talk about a lot of different issues concerning the veterans and the military. Uh, we encourage you to call in if you have anything you'd like to share, uh, you know, about what's happening if you're in the military or a veteran. And, uh, you know, want to share some information, you give us a call here at 415-871-2474. And, <coughs> excuse me, as I mentioned on previous programs, what we try to do here, or what we're doing here, is being informative about a lot of things. There's quite a few um, activities going on within the military veterans community. A lot of organizations, a lot of good things being done, but a lot of people are not aware of some of the things that's out there. So what we're going to try to do is connect the dots um, in case you missed something. And it's also uh, enlightens the uh, civilian populace about what's happening here uh, with our military because the military here in Hawaii is a very integral part. Uh, a lot of our veterans, a lot of our military personnel, they retire and live here and uh, provide a lot of uh, community services for our, our community because uh, it's in the spirit of giving back. But right now uh, on the program, I have a call-in guest, Mr. Dennis Ige, and he's been on the program for, with me before. And uh, Dennis is an advocate for veterans. He travels around the country talking to a lot of uh, policymakers. And uh, right now he's in Florida. But Dennis, thank you for joining us on the program. Well, thank you for having me, Calvin. It's always a pleasure. Great, yeah. Uh, for those viewers are, who have never uh, have never heard of you before, which I think is, you know, everybody's basically heard of you. But um, what are some of the things you're into right now? I know that you're the president of NAUS, and uh, could you tell us a little bit about that organization and your military background, just as a recap? Well, uh, my military <coughs> background was uh, 20 years in the Navy, mm -hmm. eight of it at sea. And, uh, gee, I only did one, one shore assignment inside the United States, although Hawaii was a state. Mm -hmm. when I, uh, when I uh, was stationed there. Uh, my specialty was electronics, uh, radio, and radar. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, had, I had a lot of adventure, and uh, Vietnam was, it was kind of the central focus of my 20 years in the Navy. Mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, I'm uh, president of the NAUS Hawaii chapter, where they uh, nationally, they went out of business at the end of last year, and they're in the process of uh, reforming as USA.org, United uh, Uniform Correction, Uniform Services Association.org. Mm -hmm. They have a website up. Uh, anybody interested, who maybe they were a former NAUS member, uh, they're still on board. They're, they're keeping the membership as it was. And then, of course, when it comes time to renew, member gets to, gets to make the choice. Yeah. Well, now is part of a, I know there's a much larger group on a national level that uh, with the major organizations, veterans organizations, who are part of that. Um, are they part of the, I forgot the name, it was the council, the national council or something? Or? Well, they're a founding member <coughs> of the National Military Veterans Alliance, mm -hmm. and they also are also a member of the military coalition. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the alliances are not so high bound by uh, by rules that re require everybody to be, you know, consensual. Right. Uh, they're and but they do reach out and they are effective in uh, in uh, seeking the assistance of members of Congress. That's mm -hmm. their mission. Right. I know that uh, with look with these organizations, they're supposed to be apolitical. But I know that uh, individually, the members get involved with. Um, a lot of things is happening not only with uh, locally here, like in Hawaii, but also, of course, across the country. A lot of uh, uh, members, are, you know, our service members or veterans, have ran for office. Anyhow, uh, what are some of the things when you went you recently you went to Washington? What are some of the things that they're talking about concerning the veterans in the military now that we need to be aware of? Well, they are making noise, and it's on television, so it's no secret that they want to. They want to build the military back up, uh, maybe to where it was uh, during uh, Reagan's time. Maybe it won't quite get that big because mm -hmm. it'd be awful expensive. But uh, during Vietnam time in the Navy, we had a thousand ships, and there were a million personnel boarding or riding in those ships. So mm -hmm. uh, 
Now I think we're maybe about one third of that number. But uh, uh, what I'm well, I'm still concerned that uh, blue water sailors from the Vietnam War, uh, their uh, presumed exposure to Agent Orms was uh, unceremoniously uh, terminated mm -hmm. to fund another program, which will uh, remain anonymous. That is going to be a discussion for another day. Right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because I know there's a lot of issues, not only with the Blue Water Sailors, but uh, quite a few of the <coughs> remaining um, Vietnam vets. There's a lot of issues that, uh, of health that are... Uh, Hello, Calvin. Hello? Can you hear me? Okay, we may be seeming to have a technical problem here. Dennis, can you hear me? Hello? Okay. Hello? Okay. Hi, my name is Justini Spiritu. This is my co-host, Matthew Johnson. Every Thursday at 4 p.m., we host the Hawaii Food and Farmers Series. This is the place you can come to for insight on the perspective and history and passions of Hawaii's farmers and all folks involved in Hawaii's local food system. What kind of folks do we have on? So we have everyone from local farmers. We have foodies, chefs. We also have journalists, uh, researchers, anyone who's actually working to help make Hawaii's local food system that much better. So join us every Thursday and uh, tweet in to us and ask us some questions and leave your comments as well. Thank you. Hawaii is a place where you get to watch shrinks and others involved in psychology talk about the joy, the sorrow, the pain, and the bliss of being human. I am Steve Katz, and I am a practicing marriage and family therapist here in Honolulu. My guests are psychologists, clinical social workers, and others who are interested in helping people be fully alive. Please join us into this most human journey in consciousness and loving kindness. Hey, everybody. Uh, it's Ian, social media manager here at Think Tech Hawaii. Thanks for tuning in. I'm sorry to break into your show. If you're listening on the podcast, thanks for listening, watching on YouTube. We appreciate the subscription, etc. Uh, if you are a longtime listener or viewer of Think Tech Hawaii, you would know that we are on every day, five to six hours a day, basically streaming stuff that's happening here in Hawaii that matters to everybody worldwide, basically. There's a lot of stuff that we got going on, and we're excited about many of them. 2017 is going to be really cool. But right now, I can tell you that we are on iTunes where you can listen to all of this stuff now. We're really, really excited about how that's going. And we have just started a uh, on the street feature where we take a camera out to the street and stream live to you guys out there and getting what people in the local community out, what they want or are thinking about and sharing that with you. Um, we're really excited about all that stuff. We're really excited about you guys watching and following us on all the social media sort of things, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. Look for us, Think Tech HI. Watch us on Olelo. Thank you so much. Our, everybody here appreciates it. Hello. OK. All right, you're back live. Uh, we had a slight technical diff uh, difficulty in um, our con communication with Dennis. And uh, as I mentioned, he's my call and guest today. Uh, Mr. Dennis Ige, who's the national uh, or the chapter president here uh, in Hawaii for NAUS. And Dennis, thanks a lot uh, for staying on the line anyhow. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, before we took our break here, uh, one of the things we were talking about as far as like some of the medical issues, are you talking about the blue water sailors and everything else? Um, how much progress has been made? I mean, has there been any solid legislation or funding, uh, you know, to address that issue? And I think you did mention that, but uh, is, there, is there anything in place right now? Well, there are bills that are being introduced. Uh, there, there was legislation that, that's really not uh, specific enough to make anything happen. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I think we're, we're going to get back what we should never have lost in the first place. It's just going to take a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, there was another agenda that uh, was popular at the time with uh, that our uh, presumed exposure was terminated. Uh, in order to pay for another program, but uh, ironically, the beneficiaries were mostly not able to qualify. So the right. VA is sitting on the money. They'd like to spend it somewhere else, but there's uh, a few hawks in the 
in the house that are watching it real close. They don't want the VA to say, oh, no, we spent that money on something else. They're not allowing that to happen. All right. Uh, <coughs> Mark Takai was one of those, mm-hmm. and I think we still have a few right. that uh, are, are in the house. But they're not going to let the VA just uh, spend that money as they see fit. It's, it's just maybe for a purpose. Can't, can't, that's ground for us to get our our uh, uh, our presumption back. So uh, we can benefit okay. from having served. Right. I know there. One of the things, of course, we talk about what's happening with the middle, uh, benefits for their our um, current veterans. But <coughs> excuse me. One of the things we that I don't hear talked about too much is that, especially during the Vietnam uh, era, uh, there have been issues that came up with as far as certain dirt birth defects or certain things that came up, health issues that um, are not. At, I don't think it's been really openly addressed in a way. Have you heard anything or any uh, discussion about that? Because I think a lot of people may not be aware of, that they may be entitled to benefits because if they had a, um, a parent that was uh, stationed in Vietnam who suffered from some of these ail- ailments that were caused by uh, Agent Orange or some of, somebody else, that they may be entitled if there's a direct correlation in their current health situation. Is that correct? That's that seems to be the case, yes. And uh, so, you know, uh, <coughs> children of, of the veterans who served, uh, w- there's no doubt about it, they were exposed if they had boots on the ground. Yeah. And so if they have uh, a birth defects in the family where none ever existed, I think it is in their best interest that they check with the VA yeah. or uh, or check with somebody, who's, uh, you know, keeping an eye on that. Uh I wouldn't necessarily say it would be your congressional representative, but yeah. that might be a good place to start. Yeah, uh, we're going to try to do some more research on that because, <coughs> excuse me, pardon me, keep going. Myself. I get all choked up when I talk to you. Um, yeah, I think <laughs> what I, you know, we'll be here sometime offline in the military community. If you look at the instances of cancers and some other things that have developed with uh, some of the dependent children, uh, it really, um, you know, you have to think really what's going on. So what we're going to try to do is get in touch with the right people. Again, we're not here to go ahead and put any misinformation out or try to make any innuendos about uh, possible health issues. But there's another number of things that came up uh, as far as like with the water on certain bases, not necessarily here in Hawaii, but uh, in other parts of mm-hmm. the country. Then on a later date when it's been disclosed that there have been issues, you know. So um, these are some of the things that like, so we will, you know, tackle. Uh, because, again, there's a lot of things that are talked about offline, you know, not that we're trying to embarrass the military or any other um, facet of the government, but um, I think there are a lot of people who are, get frustrated sometimes when they feel that their issues are not being adequately addressed. Uh, am I correct? There's anything else you want to add to that? No, I, you know, I think you're absolutely correct. And uh, uh, the government may be... I don't think they can be overcautious with the taxpayers' money. Uh, there are there are people out there that they find out from time to time they are game with the system, mm. and uh, it's like uh, a point I made at the February Oahu Veterans Council. But I think if the if the VA would take the lead in finding jobs as as the principal principal benefit for veterans, mm-hmm. that uh, maybe if they are are busily busy and gainfully employed, they'll have less time to dwell on on some of the elements that they picked up from being in uh, in a bad place, yeah. you know, 50 years ago. <coughs> and now, us Vietnam vets, we're getting a little bit old, a little long in the street. Yeah. But then we got kids, and uh, I don't think it's any better, probably. It could, could be the more intense in the sandbox, as we call it, over in Afghanistan and Iraq and the Middle East. Yeah, I lived over there. Uh, luckily, it was uh, pretty peace peace time when I was there. But uh, mm-hmm. oh man, the weather itself is brutal. And then you throw in uh, high rate of fire weapons and, uh, and anything else that you can pick up in the desert environment. Uh, it, it's not nice, and it's no wonder people come back a little bit a uh, little bit changed in their minds and their attitude when they yeah. come back from being uh, ordered into harm's way. Yeah. Well. Like I say, there's a lot of things that <clears throat> need to be addressed. I, I mean, we constantly hear about the new 
revelations within the system. And the thing that over here, as I mentioned, there are a lot of good people that you know work within the VA system over here. But a lot of things are systemic yeah. in nature, you know, that have to be changed at the core, back in Washington or some other higher level, you know. But um, right. there are a lot of people that really want to be part of the solution. You know, when you're dealing with not only with the veterans and the military issues, but um, sometimes it seems that uh, we have certain elected officials who subscribe to the old uh, adage that if it doesn't serve me, it serves no purpose, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's where we have a lot of veterans that are, um, you know, they, they're kind of, they, you know, they're hurting in a way, you know. But I think we need more cooperation within the veterans and the military community when the... Um, certain people or, or charged with being in charge of um, the um, programs are not really living up to par. Well, anyhow, um, <clears throat> one of the, what are some of the other things that you touched, that you um, became aware of well, while you were in Washington? Well, something, here's something that you don't hear about much over there in Hawaii, and you should. Yeah. It's the, uh, the chemical is called Roundup. And if you dig into it a little bit, you'll find out that it's Agent Orange by another name, slightly modified and, and not supposed to be quite so toxic. But when, you, when you're out there applying it on mm -hmm. the ranches and uh, you know, in the places where they grow seeds, they use an awful lot of, of insecticides like Roundup. Yeah. It's, a, it's a pretty dangerous chemical, and I'm hearing about it here in Florida because uh -huh. we have a lot of orange groves here, and they use it keep the bugs off the fruit, so, uh, you know, it's edible, mm -hmm. and uh, we're not hearing about it too much here in Hawaii, but it's, the name does pop up. I want people to remember the name Roundup. Yeah. It's pretty much like Agent Orange, not exactly, mm -hmm. and I'm not a, uh, you know, I'm not, not a chemical engineer, so mm -hmm. I can't tell you what they changed in it to try to, to make it a little more acceptable. Yeah. But, uh, it's still going on, so we got people who are not necessarily in the Vietnam are being exposed to something quite similar to Agent Orange, and uh, they have the same issues with cancers. Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing. Like when they, when something is identified, they either relabel it, you know, or bury the information, you know, and the thing is like profits over health, you know, and I think that's another thing right. that gets people very upset when the fact that you think that there's certain, you know, the companies would have more, resp be more responsible. Mm -hmm to the, uh, not only to the customers, but also, you know, to the environment in general. And then you come to find that later right. on, all these things happen, you know, there's like years down the road. And by that time, like say, right. as far right. as the number of individuals who, you know, may have, you know, terminated out or, you know, of course passed away, um, you know, and that's right. when the fight begins. So it's all about, it seems to be about the money, you know, and here in America, you know, we still have the illusion that, um, you know, that, there are people that are, I mean, there are a lot of people still looking out for the uh, American populace, but there are too many people out there in the wrong, in the right places, the wrong people in the right places who are making the decisions who don't seem to really give a rip. You know, it's all about the profit line, you know, about the image or, like, say, the illusion that, you know, everything is right. fine, you know. But, um, you know, we and see... I think it in, there needs to be a lot, I think there needs to be a lot more selflessness, not selfishness. Yeah. There are people out there... Uh, not not so much in Camp Lejeune, but uh, there's a, there's a, an army post up in the upstate New York where apparently they process some toxic chemicals, mm -hmm. and uh, they're making the big belly who about being victims of this and uh, poor management, and so they get the sick. But then when I ask them, I say, well, what about Agent Orange? Can't you include this? The toxic chemical? Oh no, you guys take care of yourself. We have we're too busy. So. I, I don't call that very selfless, and therefore, divide and conquer, mm -hmm. nothing gets done, the generation dies off, mm -hmm. and it leads to birth to defect. You yeah. don't know where did all that come from, that's strange. Yeah. Well, I remember my my uncle, he was in uh, he was in Nagasaki at the end of the Second World War, mm -hmm. and he got some radiation poisoning, and well, 50, 60 years later, yeah. uh, he ended up with throat cancer. Right. And uh, the doctor finally VA allowed regular, ordinary doctors to, to uh, diagnose to the VA satisfaction for the longest time. They, uh, if you weren't a VA doctor, your diagnosis didn't count. Yeah. And uh, so uh, he was awarded a, a rating and uh, uh, giving money, and uh, they called my aunt, 
you say, well, you're too lazy, died. They said, okay, we'll give you a pen. Yeah, well, that, that's another issue. <laughs> yeah, that's another issue, like say, that I think that uh, needs to be uh, more explored in a, in a very public way. Uh, as I mentioned, like I say, once you get into the system, the medical uh, care that's provided to the, uh, you know, to the veterans of the military, you know, are top notch, you know. But there's times when there's certain new um, innovative uh, medical techniques that may come aboard that are either dismissed or by the time they try to, you know, the individuals or the companies that try to introduce this into the, um, you know, the protocol mm -hmm. for addressing certain issues, it, it, it's ridiculous. I mean, you know, I, we had a guest on the program a couple of weeks ago who uh, have some, you know, they have some very innovative ways of dealing with not only uh, diabetes, but uh, post-traumatic stress and all these different issues. And uh, it seems right. like the powers that be, uh, they, they take more than too much time trying to overanalyze. I mean, especially when it's been vetted in the civilian uh, sector. And why can't it, you know, transition over into the military or the veteran treatment, you know, programs? And um, again, that's a lot of frustration because there are people out there, and I don't want to be negative about the VA, but as I mentioned before, systemically there's a lot of issues that need to be addressed, and they're not being properly aired in public, and that's in my opinion, and I think some other, a lot of people have shared that with me. And again, it's not to be negative, but we want to be proactive as far as trying to divide their, I mean, provide the information. If there's uh, certain uh, medical protocols out there that uh, the system is reluctant to embrace, then we need to mm. put pressure on these people, you know. And um, again, that's the purpose here in the program is to network. You know, if there is something out there, a lot of times with benefits, we have a problem with um, even securing your benefits in a timely manner, you know. And then that becomes right. a medical, you know, a financial drain on the, um, you know, on the family because it was coming out of their pockets, you know. So if that's the case where they do have to wait for certain medical treatments and there's something out there that's going to really benefit them, all right, that's what we're going to do here in the program is allow people to you know, get the people the information, let them vet it for themselves, and it, if it helps to alleviate certain financial or either health issues, then, you know, hopefully we'll do that. And that's why I'd like to have people call in if they do know of anything that, um, or any system out there that is going to be beneficial, you know, not just to make money or anything like that, but something that is truly beneficial to our veterans and military, then I think that, uh, you know, we need to share that information. So well, that's true. And then, David, exactly to your point, hmm. in El Paso, Texas, where uh, Fort Bliss is located, the VA uh, facility there, uh, they are working with the local health care industry, mm -hmm. and uh, they're outsourcing many of the uh, many things that uh, the VA could do, mm -hmm. but this is almost duplicated. So now, in that case, it's a, it's a pilot program, mm -hmm. to, to what I've been advised, and uh, the VA focuses on what it can do, but that the local health care industry providers, they cannot. Right. And so they're... Uh, one plus one is three because you got a good team going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, like I say, I think we, as far as the veterans and, you know, the populace, I mean, because one thing, is something George Washington said that a country, a country is, is, is judged by the way it treats its veterans, you know. And, um, you know, it, it becomes an issue when you have someone that served in the military and they go back to their neighborhoods or their family and they, might relate some of the negative things that they've, uh, you know, encountered in the system systemically. And right. that, you know, it dis discourages a lot of people from serving their country. We have like two, per well, as far as percentages, like 1% of the total American population is involved, I mean, you know, in the military. And then you got to, you know, according to certain sources, 1% own them, you know, 99% of the money here in the, in, the, in the country, you know. So we got 2% that's having a major effect on what's happening with our country, you know. And I think there are a lot of people who do mm -hmm. want to get involved and be, you know, serve their country. But they want to make sure that they're not left hanging out to dry after they serve their country, you know. So, um, again, I think, it, you know, it has a reverberating effect, like I say, throughout the country, you know. So I Okay. Well, you're so right, Calvin, and you know, uh, you got you definitely got your uh, your ear to the rail, so you you know what's happening. It mm. always has, in my opinion. And, yeah. uh, so, anytime I get a chance to contribute my little bit, I'm real happy to do it. Yeah, uh, like 
I think, you know, as I mentioned with yourself, I mentioned this before, is, the, you know, the fact that, you know, you are one of the unsung heroes over here that really you go out there, you walk to walk, talk to talk, you go to Washington and these other places around the country. And there are, of course, a lot of people that do listen, you know, because you do reflect a lot of the um, sentiments of the people in the, uh, you know, in the veterans community. I tell you, uh, mm. what other issues right now that um, we should be made aware of that you came across when you're in Washington? Well, another thing, it's kind of off the topic, but a lot of military people, they, uh, they work in communications, mm -hmm. and uh, we have uh, HR 555 is introduced to uh, kind of uh, focus the issue on the fact that these ugly ham radio antennas we see and we love to hate them so bad, mm -hmm. they certainly serve a useful purpose. And if we don't give the the licensed operators of the radios that are connected to the antennas a chance to practice mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of groom their skill, hone their skills, uh, we're not going to be here for it, folks. And, then, of course, then it will be criticized. And, uh, mm -hmm. But uh, if that... So I focus my attention on our two U.S. senators because this bill uh, died with another number mm -hmm. in the last session of Congress. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so, and I reminded them that you guys are probably shooting yourself in the foot. Mm -hmm. And the, and the two people I testified, you know, in their office who uh, shared my sentiments, uh, I hopefully I convinced them that they should convince the senator to stop listening to who they're listening to mm -hmm. and uh, give us a chance to do what we're licensed to do in an emergency, and, uh, and they'll be amazed how... how uh, really much benefit we will be to the community. Okay. We just have to be given the chance. We shouldn't have to fight with uh, with rules and regulations. So that's H.R. 555, uh, five, which mm -hmm. passed the House as it did last time, and it was killed in the Senate. So okay. we need to get uh, our two senators on board with this and, uh, you know, listen to us. We're there, we're there to help them. The people are listening to you. They're going to go run high somewhere when the hurricane comes or, or the earthquake or yeah. something even worse and more sinister. But we'll be here okay. if we're given a chance. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like I say, keep up the good and work. That's, that's okay. Well, what? I'll be back at the end of the month, and then uh, May, April is another mm -hmm. uh, Oahu Veterans uh, Council meeting. I'll be there for that, and uh, I'll, I'll pass the word on to you. Okay. Whatever comes <coughs> down. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, now, Dennis, I want to and thank and, you. Uh, I'm sorry? You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Anyhow, I want to thank you for joining us here on the program and, you know, for all you do for the, uh, the military and the veterans over here and uh, throughout the country, anyhow. And, yeah, we'll see you when you get back, anyhow, but keep up the good work. Right. Okay. Well, take some credit for that, too. You're pretty inspirational yeah. yourself, Calvin. Yeah, there's a lot of people doing a lot more than I am, but thank you for that sentiment, anyhow. I appreciate that. That's okay. You have access to them, and you're not, you don't mind sharing. You know? All right. That's, that's the good part. Okay. Okay. Again, Dennis, thanks a lot. Aloha. Aloha. We'll see you when you get back here. Okay, bye. Okay. And that was Mr. Dennis E. Gay. And um, as I mentioned, if there's anything you'd like to share here on the program, just give us a call, you know, and we'll be more than happy to put you in the air or, you know, call in and we'll talk about it. But the main thing is networking, um, being part of the solution and not part of the problem. And I want to thank you all for viewing into the program again, and we'll see you sometime in the future. Thank you very much, and aloha.